I'm Thomas Baldrick. Ash coverage from Orlando, Florida continues joining us now. We're happy to have with us Dr. Sudiptu Mukherjee from the Cleveland Clinic. Thanks for spending a few minutes out of your day with us. Thank you. Let's talk about this work of yours, radioactive iodine treatment of thyroid cancer and risk of MDS. Uh, what's an overview of this work? So this is basically a cancer registry study where we were trying to see whether thyroid cancer patients who receive radioactive iodine after they had their surgery, does that increase their risk of having myelodysplastic syndromes uh, or any other bone marrow failure conditions uh, once they have been cured of their thyroid cancer. Uh, there's a reason why we picked up myelodysplastic syndromes and there's a reason why we picked up thyroid cancer. Uh, the reason for picking up myelodysplastic syndrome is it is the most common myeloid malignancy in the US and it became reportable as a cancer only in 2001, just 14 years ago. We have no data at all about the risk of MDS in thyroid cancer patients, and this is the first study to address that question. Uh, picking up thyroid cancer, uh, a lot of thyroid cancer patients, after they get surgery, they get radioactive iodine as part of the treatment to uh, basically obliterate the remaining cancerous cells. Uh, we know radioactive iodine is an, also emits ionizing radiation and we know radiation is a carcinogen. So the fact that these people were treated with radioactive iodine, do we put these people at risk of having MDS? And we've particularly focused on well-differentiated thyroid cancer patients, uh, namely people who have papillary or follicular thyroid cancers. And the reason was twofold. One of them, the thyroid cancer incidence has been going up in the United States over the last three decades. This is mostly because we are detecting more of these cancers, because we are screening for more of them. What we are finding is we are picking up more cancers and we are picking up cancers when they are really small. We have data to show that there really is no clear benefit to using radioactive iodine in these patients after surgery. So could it be that we are over treating a lot of these thyroid cancer patients with a radioactive compound that is known to be a carcinogen and thus putting this patient at risk of having a bone marrow failure syndrome or a cancer like myelodysplastic syndrome. That was the whole idea behind doing the study. So you're opening the door on issue. Um, what were the results, the key results that you found? So uh, roughly we were able to, uh, we identified about 100, approximately 100,000 uh, well-differentiated thyroid cancer patients. And we were able to uh, divide them into two groups. One who had just surgery alone. And there's another group that had surgery followed by radioactive iodine. A small proportion of those patients also received external beam radiation. So in this, our obviously the study group was the group that got radioactive iodine and the comparator group was the, were the people who just got surgery and no radioactive iodine. What we noticed was there is an increase in the risk of MDS in the patients who were treated with radioactive iodine and interestingly, we see two peaks where the risk goes up. One is the, uh, the risk peaks within the first two years of the treatment. Then the risk come down and it settles at the general baseline population rates. We see a trend where the risk seems to be going up after 12 years of completing the treatment. Uh, this is the first time uh, any study has ever reported on this uh, risk of MDS in this patient population. And this is intriguing as well as could have clinical implications. The reason is a lot of studies in the past have looked at the risk of bone marrow cancers like acute myeloid leukemia in thyroid cancer patients treated with radioactive iodine. And they did find that there is an excess risk of leukemia in this paper treated population compared to the general population. So we know that the radioactive iodine 
treatment, although it does help in curing thyroid cancers, it does carry a low but real risk of having leukemias. And we are also suggesting with our study that, you know, it probably also increases the risk of MDS, which we didn't know before. So how does this impact doctors who are treating patients with MDS? Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, the study results are still, I would say, a little bit preliminary because we are trying to dig deeper into why are the risks going up so quickly and also why do we see an increase in risk, a trend towards increase in risk after 12 years. Uh, the implications are, as I said, most of the thyroid cancers that we are seeing now and there's an increase in incidence is because we are detecting more, because we are screening more. And what we are finding are smaller tumors for which we do not know what is the clear benefit of using radioactive iodine, okay? If you are using a treatment to treat smaller, well-differentiated tumors with radioactive iodine without any clear evidence of a benefit, then if you do the risk-benefit analysis, there is a low but a real risk that the treatment may not have done much help to the patient, but it probably could have put the patient at risk of having another cancer 10 or 12 years down the line. The second thing is, it would be really interesting to find what led to the increase in risk in the first two years. It could be that people typically who get radiation treatment, they are followed more closely than the people who get surgery. So if you follow these patients more closely, you might pick up blood abnormalities that might trigger other tests that can lead to earlier diagnosis of MDS. So the first two years could be a bias for more follow-ups for people who are getting radioactive iodine treatment and so more detection of cases. I am more intrigued about why are we seeing a trend 12 years out from the treatment. That could be uh, something which we would know once we have more follow-up data. And that has clinical implications because we know from the atomic bomb survivors from Hiroshima and Nagasaki, their risk of MDS keeps going up even 40 years after the bombing e event. We are just, we just have data on 12 years. If you add another five, eight or 10 years more, we could just, this could just be a tip of the iceberg. You know we don't know, this could just be a tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. for the problem, we don't know. You know what so, this tells me? Yes. This tells me you have a lot of work ahead of you. Yes, I do. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We appreciate it. Um, congratulations on your findings and identifying this issue and, and best of luck in finding further solutions. Thank you very much. Our pleasure. Okay.